Okay? Now, we're going to go backwards and make the chat. Um, how I first learned how to thread chucks is John Solberg. Uh, when I first got my vacuum chuck, he made uh, some threaded chucks and uh, used the vacuum. Um, you can also make, uh, with the threads, you can make a little sanding disc that you can take with you. Uh, or you can just do little waste blocks and glue a piece of wood on here and part it off. So they're real handy and they're great for the, the vacuum chuck. Thank you, John. For threading a chuck, you don't want to use end grain. The directions tell you not to use end grain. Uh, you can use end grain. Uh, it's not advised. Uh, the thing with using end grain it's, gonna, it's harder to do. It's harder to get those threads in there. Plus, it tears out more. Uh, I, in fact, this, this chuck here was done in grain. And I threaded it. It kind of chewed it up. It works good. But what you have to do is really soak it with CA glue and dry it and then re-thread it. Uh, but at the time, I couldn't find any kind of side grain. And um, I've used several different side grain. Today we're just going to use a piece of MDF because it makes beautiful threads. It's real easy to do, but I don't recommend it for, um, for vacuum chucks because it's too porous, so it, it won't hold the air in. But for this, it's real easy and it's simple. So I glued up four pieces of MDF and clamped it together and let it glue overnight. And then I trued it up. The, ba the bad thing about F. Oh, geez, is the thing broke? Okay, let me see what else I have. That's the bad thing about MDF. Okay, let me see here. Hmm. Well, I usually have another piece of wood here. Okay, let's see. What we're going to do is put this between centers, and we'll start over and make another. Okay, so we're going to put this between the center. And I didn't bring my big parting tool, but I can use it to deban. Deba okay, we'll trim that up a little bit. Uh huh. No, no, this is fine. It, it's a work. Again, the bad part of using MDF is real dusty. I've made a bunch of these and I've never had one break. I guess if it's going to happen, it's going to happen on a demo. I'll make this one a little thicker. Okay. Okay, so we're going to check this up. Lightly. No. <laughs> All right. And first we're going to drill it uh, on the chucks, uh, or on the taps. There's two, uh, there may be a whole bunch of different sizes. I'm sure there is. But for the lathe, I've got a mini lathe and a paramatic. On the paramatic and this jet, uh, it takes uh, a one and a quarter tap. On the small one, it's a one inch tap. 
So what I'm going to do is drill a one and an eighth inch hole because you go um, just an eighth inch smaller. Okay, for one and a quarter inch uh, TPIs for this lathe, I'll go a one a drill bit, but I'll go in one and a half inches deep, and then we'll tap it, okay? Again, slow speed to drill. Hold on to your drill bit a little bit. The MDF drills real easy too. At home, use your desk mask. And pull it out and clear it out once in a while. I've got marked on my uh, drill bit. Where, to, where my line is, or you can put a piece of tape there. Okay, I'm going to true this up a little bit. It looks a little wobbly. This gets everything really dusty. Okay, so now you want to lock your spindle. Uh, this lathe here Neil and I figured out to lock it, we can put this little bolt right here, and that'll lock it. Okay. Okay, using your spindle, I mean your tap, um, I like using this little clamp here, um, channel lock. And uh, the instructions calls for um, a wrench, and it works good. Sometimes on uh, the wrench, if it's too big, it'll hit the side, and you've got to stop and start, and it'll slip off. So I found this channel lock works a lot easier and better for me. I'll tighten it up a little bit. because you can clamp it down. Uh, get your tap. We're going to put our live center back in there. And I'm just going to butt this up against here. And there's a little hole in the back here that we're going to put into our center here. You can also use a cone shape that will hold it good. So just put it in that little divot, butt it up against here, Make sure you know, your lathe does not spin around. And then this is when you've got to be coordinated, and they talk about rubbing your stomach and chewing gum at the same time, because as you turn the tailstock, you also have, need to turn this. So you'll kind of do it consecutively. And this, again, we're in grain. It's real hard to do. I mean, I've had to use it with two hands and pull it around and around. That wouldn't make a very good demo. <laughs> so this is just going in one and a half. Okay, let me let me scoot the tail stock up a little bit. And just go till it kind of butts out. Okay? 
So now, to take it out, you don't have to turn this all together. But do go carefully. And if that locks, that's done that before. You can put this in here. There are several ways. I can just hold it here. Like this. That's okay. We'll figure this out. Here, Glenn. We can even, oh, no, you can't do it. You got your shoulder. Just untap that. Yeah. What does this job pay? <laughs> okay, so you just, you just untap this, and then we'll turn it around in the light. Would you be able to use it like that? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so no, this is fine. <laughs> this must be a bad piece of MDF. Okay, simple as that. All right, we have our tap threads. So now I can take this off. You want to make sure you undo your spindle. This is why MDF is so good for these little golf balls, because there's really no pressure or anything that you have to do it. Uh, normally, what I would do is go ahead and, because that broke, I can't do this. You'll make a little indention just so it'll seat in, um, kind of like this one here. I'll pass that around. You'll make a little indention. Called yes, it's called the thread relief. Yes. <laughs> Is it? But. Again, with this one, you don't really have to have it. Did, did pretty good button it up. <laughs> okay, also, what I want to do, in case I get this on too tight, I'm going to go ahead and put my spindle lock again and drill a little hole. And you'll see on that chuck going around. This is 21 64th drill bit. And I'll just go in about, make sure that's locked, just about a uh, half an inch or so. Just whatever your knockout bar is. Okay, now I'm just going to hollow out for the golf ball. Oh, I don't that. And we're going to measure this. You'll measure your golf ball, but uh, at the widest length, you'll go in uh, about a fourth of an inch because you want it smaller than the widest part. To fit. How much size was it? Uh, just about a quarter of an inch. Uh huh. Yeah, between an eighth and quarter, so I guess about three eighths or about that. Okay, we're going to true up this. I'm going to measure this. It's about right there. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and start this with the spindle gouge. And I could do it with a, a spindle gouge or a bow gouge. I'm going to again use the easy wood tool. And we want to go in about an, an inch. Um, 
I have like a little depth gauge I made, uh, a circle of a golf ball, and this way I can fit it to have my perfect, perfect shape of the golf ball. I'll just send that around. Uh, also, you can just use a little depth gauge to get you want to go in about one inch. The easy wood tool is easy to to shape. Sorry about the dust. I thought because we weren't sanding, we wouldn't have much dust. Okay, and then you want to check with your little gauge here to see if it'll fit. They used to have chucks for balls. that had um, two screws here and another piece on top to kind of clamp it down. And that's what they use to like hollow balls. Okay, I want to go a little bit deeper. Huh? Yeah, yes, exactly. But because it seats so nicely, you don't really need to go to that much trouble. Uh, pretty much. Uh, there are some off-brand. I don't know if it's like Noodle or, and, and there's one other um, golf ball that's a little bit smaller that doesn't fit in here. So, but most of them, uh, you know, the center diameter all does because it's like 1.5. But Titleist and Galloway and all those. Okay, we're going to get this a little bit wider. I'd rather have it too narrow at first than, than too wide. Okay, that looks like a pretty good fit. So we'll just test it out here. Let's see. Get our little hammer. Huh? Oh, that's that's a good point. Yes, good. You're right. There we go. Yes, I drill uh, another hole that's 1.8 or 21/64, so the same as the side. And sometimes I drill that in on the other side, but Ben's my chuck <laughs> broke. I can't do that. Uh, let's see. I believe I've got. So you want to drill this hole all the way through so you can use it as your knockout bar. Now we're going to seat this ball in there and see what color it is. <coughs> this is a pinnacle too, and I'm not sure I've ever turned a pinnacle too. So, you can hammer that. And a 
took my one inch out. I'm going to make sure I seat this in first because it always just see that little bit more might make a difference. Oh, it's a boring white. Okay, that's it. Thank you. That's right. I have to paint the inside of that one. No, that's okay. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Well, thank you, Sarah. Uh huh.